What's up, dudes? Welcome back to another episode of Ramas Men's Team. Uh, pretty simple. We are a group of guys helping each other make progress towards each other's goals. If you're new to the channel, awesome and welcome. If you want to help support the channel and join our pro team, head over to ramasteam.com pro, where you can contribute to us on a donation basis. We also give you access to exclusive content, mastermind groups, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, hope you enjoy this episode and we'll see you on the team. And we're live. What's up, bro? What's up, buddy? Is my uh, audio coming through the mic? Can uh, I can't, I don't know. I mean, it, I'm not much of an audiophile. It, it sounds pretty clear to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got that. Sweet. That's mic stuff. Sweet. What's up, bro? Chilling, man. Just uh, just coming off. I was telling you, coming off a weekend of just pretty much solely family stuff. Um, and I, I got like last week was definitely a, a good week in terms of getting work stuff done. The only thing I kind of... Didn't do as much as I wanted to was physical, like working out, but I also chose to use those days I could have to like just rest and sleep because I had like late yeah. nights and stuff for work. So I did my best, but I got a lot of stuff done and I'm, I'm hopefully going to put out my little Patreon pet project today. Um, I've been doing those and that's been a lot of fun. Hell yeah, man. Oh, dude, I'm sorry to completely change the subject, but a link is here. Yeah, dude, I saw that. I saw that in the Discord, and now he's here. I would love to, if you're down for. It, I'd love to have him Please, on. Please, dude. Super pumped you're here, a link. If you can't come on, no sweat. Yeah, I'd love to hear the updates. Throw it out there, like I said. If you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. Um, but yeah, so yeah, dude, that was last week was nice, very nice. Mm. Yeah, man, you're you're crushing it, dude. And it seems like you're coming more at peace. Uh, yeah, coming is that how you said coming more at peace with the schedule, with with going and doing stand up comedy, being a father, being a husband, and then doing the podcast and Patreon and all that stuff. Is that is that relatively true? Yeah, man. Yeah, I've hit a nice I've hit a nice stride right now. I got there's a couple of things I got to do that I'm working on as well. But the uh, mm. yeah, right now it's going pretty well. What okay. up, Lincoln? Oh, is it coming on? Yes. What's, What's up, up, bro? bro? What's going on, fellas? Not much, man. What you up to? Oh, living living the dream. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to make sure my phone's bugging. So, you sound good. You look. Sound Give me good. one look second. Good. I'll be right back. Go ahead, man. Dude, how you been? Oh, um, had had some ups, had some downs. Cruising yeah. right now. Uh, back back at it. Um. First time in a while, everything's kind of like on pretty solid footing. Um, just got just got a, a job I've been grinding for pretty hard here last week, like officially. So Hell yeah. um, still have a few weeks before that starts, but pretty pretty pumped about that. Fuck yeah, man! Yeah, because you you went through what I you know what I would call like a life wormhole. That was like that was <laughs> insane, dude. And I was curious how you've been. Yeah. Yeah. It's been interesting. Like, I feel like sometimes going through that, obviously you're never going to go through that perfectly. Um, For sure. So I feel like at some points in time, like you just kind of have to put up walls uh, to like really kind of like focus in on one thing. Um, And so I, I, Looking back at it, like I, I think I came through the other side pretty well. I would change a, a couple things sure. <laughs> of, of how I like responded to certain things and and how I um like focused on things. But it, it's kind of like almost like a self preservation mode at some point. Like you just kind of have to you have to throw up some walls to to be able to um just kind of hone in on certain things and and uh crush them like uh like my like working out and stuff for a while just like took a back seat to mm -hmm. just making sure i didn't go off the deep end <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> and get everything down so i'm I'm finally back to a point where i feel like i'm able to focus on what i want to focus on and not focusing on what i like have to focus on makes mm. sense yeah there's, it's funny you say the walls because i i'm recently at the uh the thing I was working on for the Patreon thing from the book, All Things Shining, they, they specifically use a quote, how the one guy gets over unendurable moments is by, he says literally the same thing, building a wall around each second. 
And the problem is, is when your head pokes over the walls to see what it's over the walls and reports back just like completely unbearable news that you for some reason believe. And it's like, I thought that was such a funny way of putting it. Just yeah, that's, the wall and be like, here's like, here's everything back there and here's everything we're going to deal with in the future. And you're like, no, no, no. When in reality, you're saying like, put the walls up, focus like laser beam on the specific areas mm -hmm. and get those done. And then, you know, rather than just spinning yourself out. Yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. Is, uh, uh, a link. Is it okay if I give the guys some sort of uh, summary of what you went through? Are you comfortable with that? Or maybe if you wouldn't mind giving a summary uh, of of what that was. Roughly a year ago now, um, in the same week, um, I found out my wife was dating someone else while we were married. Mm -hmm. I lost my job and I totaled my car. <laughs> And your like favorite soccer player died or something. Oh yeah, remember that? Well, remember, no, remember that? You're like, and he had Chris a heart Harris attack on the field. <laughs> yeah, Chris had a heart attack on the field. I'm sitting there. I, I turn the match on. I'm like, oh cool. I'll watch Christian play for a little bit here. Um, I'm on top of my wife. My life's just like spinning out of control. <laughs> At least I have Christian. Dude, I gotta tell you, man. I mean, I don't know, Matt. I I, I can't think of a more shitty complex situation to happen in a single week. I, I literally don't know anybody who that, who's gone through that level of trauma inside of such a, f a short period of days. Yeah, dude. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I, you know, especially, especially stuff that wasn't like, like I know a lot of people that have like <clears throat> had like wild shit storms come up, but like, I, it's like they were the sole cause of them if that, you know, I know people mm -hmm. who like, if like this happened, that happened, they went to jail, but it's like, they were like, selling heroin and stuff and that's what's kind of what they get but the, uh, yeah but yeah so yes. yeah this is just be like kicking around just living a normal life and have those three things so quickly i yeah i'm with you i don't know i don't know anyone who's done that yeah well and and a link let me ask you what have you learned from the process how have you grown grown from the process and what are you still working on from the process um i've really uh, it, it's it's a it's been a it's been a journey for sure mm -hmm. Um, I was a person who was kind of like the emotional rock of my friend group, which was mm -hmm. so like, if, if this happened to someone else, I would be the person that they came to and be like, Hey, kind of help me with this. Like in the next couple of weeks, I'd be like reaching out and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was a person who never really asked anything of the people kind of around me. I was just like, I'll do it myself kind of person. And you just can't do it at some points. Like you yeah. have to be able to ask for help. Um, you have to be able to kind of like let people know where you're at emotionally, which is something I had like never done before. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point where it's like, I have to tell somebody or my head's going to explode, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So that it was a skill that I acquired almost out of necessity of being able to kind of um, be pretty honest about how I was doing at the time. Um, so that's definitely a uh, positive. I think I feel like uh, some of my friendships, even my friendships that I've had for 10 years or so are like closer now than they were before. Um, just because I'm kind of able to be more open about like really how things are. And it makes you appreciate those people more too. Oh yeah. No, I think on the other side of vulnerability is a deeper relationship with whoever you're being vulnerable with for sure and i am horrible at it by the way like absolutely horrible at it um if you don't mind me asking and maybe you told this to matt do, are you and your wife still together or i assume not no 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 i've yeah. been i've been divorced for like basically since then right right yeah. and if you don't mind me asking what is your what's your current perspective on that like if you had to give advice to another let's say me you know like what was your experience like do you still hold some sort of resentment which i would i would i mean holy hell what is that like for you here's the thing I, like if i look back on it i kind of put up with like a lot of negative things for a while that i just kind of ate and i'm i can do that which is why i think it lasted so long because we've been together for like 10 years um I'm able to eat a lot of negativity without it like making me negative or upset and just kind of like accepting mm -hmm. like, Hey, that this, you know, person's having a tough time. Um, so I, then that's probably a, a flaw of mine at some point 
So I think looking back on it, that it was good <laughs> that it ended, obviously, especially with the way that it ended. It, I wasn't with the, the person I thought I was with, kind of, too. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't really have a lot of negative resentments. I'm probably a little more uh, guarded, I guess, yeah. in, in kind of like the relationship sense. I've recently kind of laid out like a 20 week goal with like certain aspects, like focusing on um, like it, it, it's really 25 weeks, but I have 20 weeks left. Um, and I think at the end of that, I'm going to try to start looking at the kind of like reentering the dating pool if I feel up to it. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel kind of more guarded in that sense, like going forward. Um, which is probably not a great thing, but it's just kind of, it is what it is. Yeah. Tell me about this 20 week thing. What's going on with that? Yeah, I'd be curious. So I started uh, like, cause my life had been kind of a whirlwind and then everything kind of came together at once. Um, bought a house, um, you know, got, got this job that I'd been grinding for. So, um, I set out a goal. My first five weeks, I focused on really getting my food back the way I wanted it to and sleep. Mm. as I had been sleeping like horse shit. And so I got that back under me. And then my next 10 weeks was really um, continuing that improvement and adding in kind of more physical activity, which I'm in week two of 10 um, and really, and really digging that right now. I wish it would not be super windy every day because I love to play disc golf, but Mm. the weather gods are just really spiting me. Um, and then the last the last 10 weeks is a really mental health focused. Um, I'm going I'm gonna start going back to therapy again um, in that in that time frame I already have that set up. So that's kind of the the focus at least was like the first you know few weeks was diet and sleep. second kind of part of it was adding physical um, exercise and activity into that and then kind of mental health focus at the end. Love it, man. Hell yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah, however we can help support you. And just so you know, on the Discord, we just started um, another fitness round, just posting our our things to the Discord um, in that fitness channel. So if you want to join, man, of course, you're welcome to all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, I I had this thought, I don't know if it would work or not, of trying to do a Discord, within Discord, start just like an audio channel and then just go for a run with headphones and then have just a little, kind of like you people be running all over the place, but you could be running and like kind of bullshitting a little bit with other people and seeing. And is that, is that like real time communication or just like yeah. you leave an audio file? I think it's real time. I think it's real time. Remember how we met in here the one time and Dis- well, in yeah, discord yeah. when I went to the airport, yeah. um, I, I was like thinking, I was like, I don't know if that would be kind of a pain in the ass or just not really work, but it'd be kind of funny to just be running and just, yeah, a lot of heavy, it would be a lot of heavy breathing, but it'd be funny too, because a bunch of like, dude breaths going you have around. to tap out. You have to be like, I'm done. I'm done. And other people are like, yeah, I'm going, I don't know. It could be dumb. Give us a shot, man. I, I might, I might honestly, but the, uh, yeah, yeah. Cause I've been doing a thing in the park where like, I, I just run in this park and like, I'll, I'll run like about, about a quarter mile, stop, stretch a little bit, do push ups, run another about a quarter mile, do more push ups, stretch. And then the last quarter mile, I try to like not sprint, but go as fast as I possibly can. And mm-hmm. that's, dude, it takes like 10 minutes. It's so easy. Love it. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think whatever, I mean, give it a shot, man. Um, and, uh, and a link dude, however you can lean on the team, um, fucking do it and, and also lead the team. I want to, I want to pick your brains a little. Cause I, I, I really just did it myself. Mm-hmm. But I, I've struggled a little bit with like self-improvement and dating. Like I, obviously I knew at a point it's like, I'm not ready for that. Right. Yeah. So I felt like I had to kind of improve myself, get myself back kind of where I wanted to be. So it, where do you think that line is um, between like self-improvement and like putting yourself out there to like, I, like dating and I guess like I haven't really been single before this since I was like 18 I had yeah. like a Motorola razor the last time I was single <laughs> so <laughs> what, a good, what, a, what a great it, a little milestone flag yeah. to put in there <laughs> yeah it's uh it's definitely kind of a daunting task okay. it feels like dude I, I I've got a lot to say on this but Matt please go ahead 
Uh, I mean, yeah, I missed the beginning of the question, but I think I have an idea what you're saying. But the, yeah, I mean, honestly, I I would hesitate against the. I mean, there's nothing wrong. Obviously, I think I highly recommend like always trying to be your best in terms of like working out and all you know all that other stuff. Um, but that being said, I don't think there's anything wrong with just entering the dating pool like whenever whenever you feel ready to. Just really trying to nail down like the friendship aspect and like meeting someone you just like like hanging out with and whatnot mm. you know and in the meantime you know if you want to like that's i don't know I, I think there's it's it's one of those things where it's like it's it's just a balance thing because it's like if you if you go so much like i don't deserve to go in the dating pool unless x y and z and it, it's just like crazy in terms of like you know uh and it's like a self-worth issue i should say if it's like yeah. you know, unless i can do without and run fucking 30 mile you know some weird david goggins thing I would say enter whenever you feel comfortable, and like I, you know, I would just there's it's there's it's totally natural, obviously, to be like, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I can to trim up and you know dap her up a little bit. That's universal. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. people when they get out of relationships usually lose like, I, especially like women I've noticed just like melt weight off themselves. Yeah, That's, you know, so it's a motivator for sure. So I would let it just motivate you, and you know, just go out and just have fun with it. Hey, dudes, sorry for the interruption here. Just wanted to let you know if you want to join our pro team. Go to romasteam.com slash pro. You can help support the channel. You will also get access to exclusive content, masterminds, one-on-one -on -one sessions, et cetera. All right, back to the episode. Yeah. Um, you mind if I throw an opinion out there, A-Link? Go for it. Okay. So so this is very, this is, uh, very applicable. Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, so I, I, can, I can give my perspective on multiple different angles. Um, the first angle is like the way that I look at it is I will earn my spouse like that. That's how I look at it. Like, there, and that puts me in the driver's seat of like, I can do things to earn that, if that makes sense. Um, now, I, I do think I, I try to do my best to keep it in a very healthy sliver because you can take it one way left or right and all of a sudden it becomes unhealthy. So for that, I, I personally, I mean, I see everything in formulas, but I think a formulaic approach is better than a non-formulaic approach in terms of, okay, if I'm going to earn my spouse, what does that look like? Who do I have to become to do that? And realizing it is an evolution. It is not a just, okay, one day I will be there. And simultaneously knowing that I am worthy of it as well, regardless of where I'm at in the journey. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. To that point. Um, so I don't think there's ever going to be a point where it's like, yep, like I'm done and now I'm sufficiently worthy. I think there's actually massive upside for a female to get, let's say, you on your upward trajectory. And the great freaking news is that females are massively attracted to ambition in all domains. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can get, and one thing I would add on top of what Matt is saying is, is if you can get sufficiently comfortable, not completely comfortable, because it's like that's not going to fucking happen. You know, it hasn't happened for me. It probably hasn't happened to Matt. It's not going to happen to you. It's just it's not going to fucking happen. So, but if you can learn how to communicate that ambition, almost like saying like, hey, you know, like, sorry, this is market terminology, but like, you're about to get an undervalued asset. You don't know how much of a fucking beast I am, right? And let me communicate it to you, if that makes sense. Now, so that's the second part. But the first part is in my goals binder, I have this. You're welcome to steal it if you'd like. So this is, that's the spouse, right? The, the archetype type of the spouse. All of the things around this are what I need to be doing it, by my own definition to earn that spouse. Does that make sense? And I reverse engineer. It's like, okay, well, like the spouse that I want, what would she want? And I'm not bitter about any of this. Like you'll see, for instance, car on there or something like that. It's like I need to give her indicators that I can provide for her sufficiently to give her safety, right? And I don't fucking care what that is. I'm not going to judge what that is, if that makes sense. So now I use Matt's towards and away thing. So it's like, okay, every single, if you look up here, like there's little check boxes, right? So it's like every single day I look at this and I ask myself, am I going towards or away that? Or, or the food I'm about to eat, is that getting me towards or away my goal? Um, or the thing that I'm about to do, or the thing that I'm deciding not to do. Like I'm, I want to read every single day. I want to write every single day. I want to go to dance four or five times a week. Like, am I becoming this person? And then there's other things on here like charisma, smiling, humor, all those things. That gives me this playground to be able to evolve myself every day to earn that spouse. I, so obviously I'm doing it. That's what I would tell you. 
right? And and I also, I don't know that I would wait for the 25 weeks because that implies this one day I'll be done. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's the case. And I think honestly, you're not giving the opportunity to potentially your future spouse to get you in this journey. It's the, it's the I think I've never read The Great Gatsby, but I actually have read The Great Gatsby years ago. But I watched the movie too. I, I think it's the Gatsby paradox. Like you're you're sending that mate away because you you conclude up by your own by your own judgment that she can't handle it. So I'm gonna go and work on myself. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go do the work, and then I'm gonna come back. Well, fucking guess what? Right when you come back, doesn't matter how many parties you throw. Doesn't matter how much you show. Right, like you will likely not get her because you robbed her of the ability and assumed that she wouldn't go elsewhere in the meantime. Mm. You know, you robbed her of the ability to join you in the journey. So that's what I would say to you. And then, dude, do a shitload of self work. Yeah. Like, there's some guys on YouTube that you know they can start obviously start to cross into like corny territory. But for instance, I just purchased Charisma on Command. Um, if you want, you know, let me know. We can chat about it totally. Um, uh, so that's a pretty good course. And then. My other buddy sent me these courses and again, I'm hesitant to really recommend these because like I definitely throw out a lot of what these types of dudes say, but some of their stuff is really, uh, is really good. Have you ever heard of Julian himself? He's like this dating guy. Uh, Yeah, I think I've heard the name before. Yeah. So anyway, just like find those types of of individuals or groups that are teaching this, like a lot of self-work that's particularly in the, in the world of dating because they they now are attaching a context that might be applicable to you. Yeah. I, I like the, uh, like it makes total sense. What else we were saying, like, just kind of like have some sort of vision, like know what you need to do and just be filtering your decisions through that. Like, is this genuinely going to help me in my quest, you know, to have a relationship or not. And, you know, I, I think people can simultaneously go, I think you can, and maybe this is, yeah, I, you know what? I, I do believe this. I, I think you can simultaneously work, equally as hard as accepting yourself and like self-validating as hard as self-improvement. You can do both of those things yeah. simultaneously. So a lot of times I think like, well, once I do, it's like you can, I sort of got, you can do both. And that makes both of them more enjoyable. Cause it's like, yeah, if you're just like, nah, I'm good, but you're not doing anything to make that a reality. Then like, yeah, that's a problem. That's, you know, kind of pathological. But again, it's the other thing. If you're like, I'm never good. It's like, that's also a problem. So just being like, you know what? I'm a good dude. I got X, Y, and Z going for me. I'm going to get out there, you know, and just go about it as, as good naturedly as possible. That's something I've never done that I've always kicked myself for. I've never dated good, good naturedly. I'd always been like, I would just be out of a relationship and just like dog around for a while and be like, it's time for a girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, my God, yeah, she yeah. better like me. And it's like, man, like what a fucking stupid thing. I, you know, it, to me, it was like, just like looking back on that. I'm like, man, that's so dumb to do that. It's not, oh, yeah. I shouldn't say dumb. It's not very understandable, but it's like. Man, how unnecessary that all is. Oh, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm telling you, A-Link, there's a whole, once you can sl- switch that perspective, and by the way, I toggle back and forth constantly, and I'm, oh, yeah. I'm studying this stuff all the time. Um, but when I bring a certain energy to the table of, like, I just want to share, like, so so I'm mm-hmm. equally as likely to talk to a guy in the, in the checkout line at the gym or whatever as I am a female. When I'm at that, like, just trying to share my energy, like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, how, how you doing? Like, that, that sort yep. of thing. Dude, that makes all the difference in the world. And that yes, sounds yeah. so simple. No, dude, it makes so much sense. Rather dude. than be like target acquired. Oh, 100%. <laughs> dude, I, I can tell you, I've talked to girls at the gym. Um, every single time when I'm like, oh, hey, say, uh, sorry, I've seen you a bunch here. You know, what's your name? My name is Wes. Nice to meet you. And then I just kind of bounce. like, And it's legitimately just like, it'd be weird for me not to introduce myself. And I would I would have done it the same to Matt if I didn't know him. And the same to this like beautiful girl right here. It That like quote works every single time but even if i say the same thing but it's like very much in like a schmeagle type of way like (laughs) my name's wes you know it's like they know immediately like you're after something and there's this implied like a like apply implied agenda that's just gross like even a dude would be like get the fuck away from me like what are you trying to do right now you know (laughs) um i mean so if you can sit there man like holy and realize there's and dude you have the honestly bro the thing that I look at in my own life was like growing up poor was by far the best gift I've ever been given or not having a dad, best gift I've ever been given because it gave me a natural obstacle and an immovable obstacle, right? I didn't have to manufacture the obstacle. You are the same way. You did not have to manufacture your obstacles. So it's like, that's the biggest fucking gift that you could receive. Do you know how many, because I work in the finance industry, you know how many people out there do not have obstacles and they are 
dead miserable, like wishing they had obstacles, as crazy as that sounds, they're mm-hmm. fucking begging for it because yeah. they have no story. It's like, oh, yeah, cool, the Mercedes I have out there or the Bentley I have out there, like that's from mom and dad and everybody knows it. Or like the girl doesn't know it, and then when we go on a date, she can tell because I'm a fucking dud. Like I can't talk <laughs> about anything. Like what do I talk about? You know, yeah. like yeah. you've got a fucking story, bro. Yep. There's no tension. I feel like that tension is missed a lot. Like if there's no tension, there's no great kind of like sharpening of yourself. It yeah. does show. It, and it, it does. It does. Dude, imagine you just watched a movie and everything was cool the entire time. Like, it's just like it was just like this flat lines like okay sweet I thought about making a movie that, that not only was that but it just got better and better and better <laughs> like oh my god this is so much better now <laughs> it just keeps getting better <laughs> yeah, yeah there would be there would be a couple definitely uncool moments in my movie dude yeah, yeah, yeah there would definitely <laughs> there would be a couple that would that, qualify dude, that as uncool back. I think oh, oh yeah totally man so like and and I think if you avoid that then you miss out on the texture and then you can't bring that texture to the next dinner date. Right. And like, like you, like, dude, you're going to fucking crush it, bro. Like hundred yeah. percent. And I would say seriously rely on the team. Like you need a fucking, whether it's this team or another team, like you need a fucking team to say like, dude, just keep on going through it. Cause it's going to fucking suck. Uh, obviously you know that, you yeah, know, but these be, next yeah. 20 weeks. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know that. <laughs> there have been days that really suck. Yeah, for sure. And, for and sure. then also know, bro, that you're not doing it for yourself. Like you're not just doing it for yourself. Like the amount that I could benefit from your journey and Matt and everybody else, like just remember that as well. Totally. Dude, the amount of girls that I hit on um, over the last like, you know, couple of weeks because I wanted to be able to have conversations w- like with the group and say like, yeah, I'm actually doing it. And like, here's what I'm learning. And the, just that little piece right there of like, I can tell when I'm being inauthentic or, or authentic. Um, I literally have done it. I don't know, probably a dozen times specifically for the Ramos men's team, just so I don't come back with my towel between my legs for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. And I would like you to do the same. Yeah. I When I moved into this house, like they had kind of like meticulously cleaned the place, obviously. That's how it kind of works in the, in the house exchange process. They left like one thing in the middle of the floor and I picked it up and it was, uh, it's like about the size of a half post-it note. It was upside down. It was a Bible verse that mm. like really honestly kind of like spun me in a positive direction. Hell yeah. I, I picked it's on my fridge now. And it's it was it's basically the story of a guy who'd like departed from his like past ways and got kind of off the path. And it said, When you return, like don't return meekly. You should return mm. boldly because you made the right choice. You know what I mean? Like it's Dude. not like you should come back like uh, well, you know, I've been away. It's like, hell yeah, I'm here now. And that like really jazzed me up. And it's just like crazy, the cosmic <laughs> coincidence. It was just like laying in the floor. And that's like when I set my goals originally was like, I got to get back to the shit. So dude, Man, I'm writing awesome. that down. Don't return meekly. That's fucking phenomenal. Damn. Oh, Doug dude, Jim love, saying okay. it was Leviticus. Dude, the, uh, Doug Jim also said early, way earlier on it, it, uh, had me chuckling, dude. Self care kings right now are just taking over in twenty twenty. I don't, I don't want to shout down DJ because he's a beast, but I'm pretty sure it's in Hebrew. Gotcha. Yeah, oh, I think sure. he's We're about to I think have he's, a Bible fight real quick. No, I think he, actually Delco Jim was that making it funny. He said you should learn about the male. <laughs> well, he's a he's a funny dude. That does not. <laughs> That'd be funny. If that was a quote he found on the ground. You should not lie with a male. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was thinking about it, man. I was thinking about it. God, that's so oh, funny. Man. Yeah, the uh, oh man, um, yeah, dude. I mean, it, look, dude. There, there is something to be said for, like, there's these old dusty books full of all this weird wisdom, and it's. I think people should check them out. I think they're good to read into, and you know, again, always separate the milk from the water, like the wise swan. There's a bunch of shit that's going to be just like a list of forty dudes' names from twelve BC. Probably could go without knowing that, but it's like there's stuff in there you read, and you're like, damn, man, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I grew up a pretty religious kid and, you know, like like a lot of adults, you just kind of like just kind of stray away from that as you get older. But, yeah, that just like hit me in the nuts when I picked that up, man. Like I, I was like crying and stuff. It's just like uh, yeah, what bro. slip of paper they left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like totally just like spun my whole like, yeah. next month around. So it's pretty That's great. awesome, man. Well, well, let me ask you this, bro. Like, how how can the team? If you had a magic wand, how could the team help you? 
Man, is um, it literally just checking in? Is it is it just being here consistently for you? What what is it? Check. Yeah, I, I would say those are two big things. Um, I when, when I was like that that day when I like got spun out from the the scripture, mm-hmm. I went back and listened to like most of the podcasts that I had been away. Just like that was just like oh, yeah. cool. on my phone and stuff. Um, so yeah, that was like huge. It was kind of like what made me decide to like structure my goals the way I did. Um, so yeah, that was like super helpful, but yeah, just ch- checking in is awesome. Just like keep keeping on top of each other for, you know, completing the things that we want to complete is big. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's already been helpful. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, good, good, man. Um, and dude, hit me up if you need to send me a, a, a message in the discord or whatever, uh, if you need my help with anything, bro, because um, I'm excited for you. Yeah, man. Like you've got you've got awesome obstacles in your way, and it's going to make you a fucking animal. I mean, you are you, you already are an animal from what you've already gone through, and you, the way you keep your emotional equilibrium um, to us and and are willing to share and be vulnerable to the team is is invaluable, bro. Yeah, I feel I feel like those life events do kind of like bring your well, like it's one or one of two ways they really can bring your best stuff about yourself kind of to the surface or you know it can always bring the worst if you handle it if you don't handle it correctly but i'll say like when i got divorced that was definitely a, the shittiest time it was a very very Ooh. bad time and that yeah. really did bring a lot of like really good stuff about myself to the surface just in, like in terms of awareness and relationships all that stuff so that's awesome yeah, yeah hell yeah and then um i was telling that earlier that unfortunately i had a mentor like probably probably like literally one mm. of my if not my biggest mentor pass away I just found out that he passed away um, last week and it sent me through a loop. Like I don't cry very often, but that like brought me to my knees. It was like, fuck man. Like this guy literally gave me, he, he was like in a movie. It's like, he's the guy who gave me a chance and didn't, I didn't deserve a chance. Like I had no reason to give me a chance. He's the whole reason I got to wall street, like all this stuff literally because of one man. Um, but I can tell you the lesson I learned from him and Matt knows the guy and mm-hmm. knew the guy as well. Um, he passed away. He was 60 years old, had millions upon millions of dollars. Right. <clears throat> but what was wrong with his plan was he approached his life in cohorts and it was like, Oh, well I'll go and I'll make all the money and then I will get to my health. Then I will get to my family. Then I will get to my emotional well being. like all of these things, dude. And I can tell you for sure, it's one thing to see it on a movie and be like, oh, yeah, that's kind of a that's kind of a, a narrative that's common, right? Like, you know, the guy who just went out, all I worried, worried about was work and then at the expense of everything else. But when it happens so close and you can actually see that narrative play out, dude, the guy was 60 years old. He passed away. Millions of dollars, beautiful house, blah, blah, blah. But I can tell you for sure that his marriage, and he wouldn't mind me saying this if he was still here, his marriage was complete shit. His relationship with his son was like so-so. Right. His health was horrible. He got his leg cut off a couple of years ago because of type two diabetes. Right. Like all of these things. So this holistic approach that we talk about is a real fucking thing. And it's not until you see some ex- like that because that was an extreme version, not until you see an extreme version like that, like in real time, in real life, like, oh, fuck. So it's like, you know, get on your ship because you don't have infinite time here. As cliche yeah. as that sounds. Yeah. And that and the, the question I asked was kind of like uh one that just like I've kind of been like portraying to myself because I just like knowing myself I, I've already in the seven weeks I feel like I've already made a lot of progress and, and I, I am gonna see this thing through but I already kind of like know at the end of that point it's like do I feel like I've improved enough <laughs> you, you know like yeah, the, sure. kind of, would another 20 weeks set me up better so that's and that's kind of why I asked that and I, I think that's some kind of valuable um information i guess because i just knowing myself i i'm kind of that way too it's like i want to fix something before i move on to something else Mm -hmm. and like with like self-improvement it's not like a it's not like a check it's fixed situation so sure yeah Yeah, dude i I would say there are things though like you know when i started like trying to headline clubs there's a there's a time where you have to just go all right well i I, there's no way i can see if this works other than doing it like i like i don't know how i'm going to sell tickets i don't know what that's going to look like so if there's sometimes you got to be like, well, let me just do it and then yeah. get some information then I can reformulate and, and at least see where I'm at. And then you can always like do it again, you know, tweak and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as best as you can, I mean, I think Matt uses the same mental model. Um, almost take yourself out of the equation to a certain extent 
and focus, at least my opinion, focus on how you can help other people. How can you be valuable to other people? Mm -hmm. um, and also be valuable to yourself. I think that's a, a, the dualistic approach is very important. Um, but I think that's what allows me to get out of my way and probably it was what allows Matt to get out of his way. It's like, okay, I'm going to try to sell tickets because his goal was to make people laugh, to mm -hmm. bring a certain amount of joy to people. So it's like, fuck, why wouldn't you try it? And if you fail at it, fuck, your intention was good. Who gives a shit? Exactly. You know, versus like, oh, I'm trying to get this. 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 So if I were in your shoes and what I say to myself now, it's like, I want to be able to bring this positive energy to another female's life. And if it's not the right time for her, if she's got a boyfriend or whatever, like she doesn't like the way I look. Okay, cool. Like then she's just not, it's, it's, it's just a mismatch. That's okay. For sure. But I will tell you for sure, bro, like have, have your arm, be ready, right? For rejection. I can tell you like that's just every male is going to go through that. And if you can get over that and not be resentful, inch by inch as you get rejected inch by inch and instead you can get motivated by it you'll crush it yeah. you'll absolutely crush it such a new thing to me too is one of the reasons that it scares me i started dating someone when i was in when i was 17 we dated for five years and then she's like actually i'm a lesbian and she's happily married to a girl now still still friends but that was a wild day and like that oh, sounds like a wild day you've had a lot of wild days my friend and a half weeks later i just like randomly started like went on ki a kind of date that i didn't know was really a date with um the girl i married so like mm. i i just haven't like dating to me is like such this like wild concept because i've just kind of like luck boxed my way i guess into relationships at this point i've never like said i'm dating now it's like never something i've done so it's uh it's seen it seems like a wild world out there to me but just kind of like I don't know. It's just like Matt said, you just kind of have to start at some point to know if exactly. you're kind of what, what's out there, what's up. Yeah. And it takes Bro, a I while could, to well, gain sorry, momentum. Please. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. It takes, no, I know with the, especially with the apps, it like, there's a period where you do it and you go, like, you, you know, you're like checking your phone. I would like check my phone compulsively, like, what the fuck's going on? But it takes a minute. Right for now. some re Yeah. For some reason, it like, Dude. it just takes a minute. I always would tell people, I'm like, give it like time. Because I don't know if it's what happens, it just takes a minute and then it starts kind of, I don't know why. But, yeah. you know, yeah. so yeah, just be patient, be patient, have it like the best approach. I've always put it like that at the foremost of my entire day. And if, if I would say something I would do differently is like, just have it out there. Have it like when you're, you know, when you're trolling for fishing, you leave a little line in the thing and you just go about your day and you just check it every now and again. Okay, cool. But, you know, yeah. I think that's the best approach. I always take a very unhealthy approach towards all that stuff and you will pay if you do that. Yeah, I, I completely agree <laughs> with you. I think every single time you go back to the pool, so I think it's no different than business, right? Like create value, create value, create value, give an offer. Mm -hmm. But every time, and, and it's like you have to do both of those things, right? A lot of people think, oh, I'll just create value, create value, create value. And then, but then you just become a martyr because you never give an offer. You never have an ask, you know? Now, you don't have to be an asshole when you ask, right? It doesn't have to be anything extreme. But my, my vote, what I do for myself and what my vote would be for you is, Every single time you go back to the pool to ask, to give an offer, a respectful offer, you better be a different person than the week before or the day before. Like each time you go back to that pool, did you take another dance class or did you go to another fitness class or did you, did you eat a healthier meal that day? Like you are a different person bit by bit each time you go back to the marketplace and offer and eventually it clicks. I would also say where a lot of guys go wrong is they, they think that online dating is going to be the solution. It's not, it's, it's, it doesn't matter the mechanism. You have to have multiple prongs to your offers and multiple prongs. Like I would also recommend, for instance, creating a Venn diagram of where you fish for fish, like where you go fishing, have that be your dojo as well, where you can display progress. So for instance, a lot of guys think like, oh, I'm going to go, I'm just going to go to the gym and I'll pick up girls there. It's like, yeah, maybe. Right. But there's not a lot of, like, oftentimes there's not a ton of girls at the gym, depending on, on where you go, or at least in the areas that we'll be working out, right? They're not in like the, the bench press area, right? So it's like, I can tell you for me, for sure, like going to dance class is a pure dojo of where I can excel my skill. And I'm committed to becoming the best dancer there, non-professional dancer. Like that is literally my goal. I just dropped $6,000 on it. So I better fucking get there. So <laughs> this is kind of like therapy for me. Um, but, but like I can simultaneously display my skill and my evolution of progress in front of the dating pool as opposed to I go and I, I go to the gym for three hours but there's nobody there that I really want to date and now I have to go and try to display at a bar or like you know 
Do you right. know what I mean? Do you, do you get like yeah. the, the difficulty there? So now yeah. like it naturally in your day to day, whether it be yoga class or date or, uh, or, or dance class or whatever the fuck, or like even a book club, whatever, where there's going to be females there witnessing your journey. It's like, Oh shit. Like Andrew showed up. He's like, he's like looking thinner. He's like looking more fit or, Oh shit. That comedy just made in this book club. It's like, it's fucking super smart or yeah. whatever. Right. Like I'd hardcore make sure you double down on that stuff too. Totally agree. It's like finding a thing you can do mm -hmm. where there's girls there. I mean, it's like the biggest thing rather than being like, all right, here we go. Cold ass, cold open. Oh, fuck, damn it. Oh, fuck. It's like, dude, that's, you know, dude, I agree. Because we used to have that. There used to be an organic, you know, again, you're in high school, you're hanging out with girls, you're in college, exactly. all that stuff. Then it just goes away and you're like, uh, fuck. I, gotta, I guess you got to like find people at work or something. You know, it's tough. Yeah. And then the work's like, you're not allowed to do that. And you're like, fuck. This may be a wild question because I've been such like a relationship person for my entire life, essentially. What does create when you say creating value in like a dating sense, especially with someone like you don't know well, what what like what does that mean to you, I guess? Oh, Matt, can I take this one? Sure. Yeah. OK, so my disease of being a robot, you know, permeates all areas of my life, including dating. I personally have a sequence. So I can tell you, um, I try to very quickly get to a psychology discussion, like very, very quickly. That automatically creates value to the female from my own experience. So it would look something like this. And I can do it now. I have plenty practiced in all domains, uh, like in all different, like, uh, you know, whether it be the grocery store, the bookstore, like dance, et cetera. The quicker I can get to teaching her about psychology or just anybody, right? Like you talk about personality assessments, you talk about the way that prefrontal cortex works, you talk about the way decision making works, like all this kind of stuff. That is valuable to everyone, like quite literally. So I'll give you an example. I, I had a conversation with a girl on the phone, super attractive woman. And you, I just know what every guy out here, especially now in California, she told me that her last date, a guy picked her up in a McLaren, right? I don't know if you know what a McLaren is, but like I, I barely know what it is, but I know it's like a fucking... It's like a jet on wheels, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and I can also tell you, that, and it's being super honest, the other the girl that I dated the week before, actually, no, no, a couple months before, and she was like uh, super into me, like wanted to like, you know, wanted to have a relationship. I'm not pounding my chest, but she dated De Dennis Rodman before me, what? right? Like, yeah, dude, wild, right? Like literally, she's like, you know who Dennis Rodman is? I was like, yeah, why? And she's like, yeah, she's like, I dated him. Because like he because he uh, no I'm sorry it came up somehow and she's like yeah I should probably just tell you this that sound weird but like I dated him and I was like like that guy and she's like yeah that guy now here's the funny thing she told me and this other girl told me that most guys are just trying to display some sort of like I'm the man versus giving them value so that same girl I taught her I was like I think you're at any uh, um what did I say I think you're an en ENFP. And she's like, what's that? And I said, well, I studied personality assess assessments a lot and blah, blah, blah. And, here. and then like blew her mind. And then I could talk around that. She learned more about herself in that conversation, you know, most likely than she did from any other guy ever. Because most guys are trying to play like the peacocking game. So if I can give her value via that direction, something that we're both sim like interested in together, and then I'm teaching her a little bit, puts me at a little spot higher in the hierarchy, and I'm giving her value. So that's an example. Yeah, or if, it's, or if it's dancing, right? Like you go to a dance, you take the person to a dance studio, or you go to a dance studio and you you have a great dance. That, that's, that's, it's not huge, right? But it's a little piece of value. You made her life a little bit better. For or if sure. you made her laugh, that's why, dude, stand up comedians like, if you can, if you can make girls laugh, that's value. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, man, I think just like genuinely being able to exude that positive feeling from within yourself and just like be in surroundings and like Kaizen talks about this all the time just like having fun and exuding fun rather than exuding like a need I think it's just like a very simple way to do it like you're having fun no you're out on a date you're enjoying the experience you don't have like again like Wes was saying like it's not all schmiegel mode where it's like this better go well if you can and not just like pretend this but genuinely be out somewhere and be enjoying the whole experience and just be honest and open about everything I think helps a lot yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Gunther saying he brought a uh, a sunflower to time and touch with his surrounding plants. Uh, womanly. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, it's it's actually it's so easy that it's kind of hard to like bring up you know example enough examples if that makes sense. 
Like yes. just think about what would make her smile, what would make her happy, what would make her interested, what would what would what could I teach her to make her life better? It's like there's infinite ways. And the funny thing is borderline no guys do it. Yeah. Yeah, and even like I said, even like it's not even like, you know, like well, you can't be nervous. Like you'll be nervous most likely. It's just, you know, Absolutely. being honest and just having fun with the whole situation. You know, or again, or just pull up in the McLaren and it's like, yeah. get in, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, yeah. New, my new house has an indoor hot tub, so, you know. Oh, there you there go. There you dude. go. Love, yeah. it, lo- loving it. But, yeah, yeah so, um, I, I, I really appreciate you guys a lot. I think it's, uh, it, especially when I, when I was, uh, you know, in a, in a life whirlwind, um, going back and listening to podcasts, it was just kind of like a familiar feeling of when things were, when my life was more calm. <laughs> just like yeah. that kind of memory so but yeah so I, i've i've uh, really appreciate the the work you guys do a lot hell yeah dude I, um i would love it if you came on here you know regularly to to give us an update man um there's such an opportunity for you to teach us like how you're getting through this shit like i, I would almost say like you know you should be you should feel obligated and, and not not really right but you, you know what i'm saying it's like you've got yeah. such an op- opportunity in front of you that the guys could benefit from yeah, man. Absolutely. <clears throat> Hell yeah, buddy. Well, well dude, A-Link, we appreciate you coming on, brother. Thanks, Thanks, man. Later on, bro. Wes, what is your week looking like? What are you going to do? Oh, dude. So um, uh, I've got a bunch to do. Um, getting the staff on board. We've got, I think I told you, got a new assistant and getting her up and running um, into some pretty deep projects here. And then let me, I'm just looking at my calendar. I'm getting really big into scheduling things now. Nice. Um, so I have to master a presentation. I've got another class coming in two weeks. So I really have to go hardcore into that a bunch of client meetings. Um, and then also want to start really getting into reading and writing more. I've got that scheduled every or two days a week now for several hours. So I'm looking nice. forward to that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nice, man. Um, how about you? Uh, this week really just doing, Two podcasts and uh, doing my actually this week I'm ta- I, I'm doing the Patreon uh, thing pretty regularly. This week I'm going to take time just to write instead of doing the Patreon thing. So I want to I'm still deciding whether I want to work on that novel or work on the other book I was working on. And mm. as of late, I've I've been like, all right, let me finish that other book or at least like like that I can finish I think pretty quickly. So so this week I'm going to get back to the writing pause. The uh, the the Patreon thing I call Doggables has been a lot of fun. So I, I, yeah. I'm going to put out the, hopefully that other one today if I can edit it perfectly or completely today. And then this week will just be the podcast. I have a stand up show this weekend in North Jersey that I, you know, that'll be my last one of my like string of shows that I did over the last six months. Um, and then from there, it'll just be just kind of getting all those things done. So hell yeah, brother. Cool. Pretty easy. I just got to show up and do stuff. Yeah, and uh, I would love it if uh, maybe this at the end of this week or next week uh, we share some trophies, some wins. We just got done the first quarter. Um, if anybody else wants to share their wins and everything, um, this uh, either Friday or next week, that'd be awesome. I'd love to hear everybody's progress. Hell, it sounds good. Cool. All right, Beast. Thank you. Thank you, A-Link. Keep it, uh, let's keep it moving. Thanks, All guys. Right. Later on. Later.